Let's move into this next section, factoring trinomials. Remember, trinomials means three terms. Got it? Before we actually get into factoring trinomials, I want to go through the distribution process of multiplying two binomials together. Okay? So, let me give an example. I would like us to multiply All right. Now here's the deal. I know some of you can multiply this in your head and you could get the answer very quickly. But I'm going to go through each step of this. And there's a reason I'm going through each step of this. Because when I understand this distribution process, what I need to do to go backwards is I need to know how to go from the answer to each of the previous lines until I get back to this original multiplication problem. Because remember, factoring is us taking the answer of a multiplication problem and going back and finding what binomials did we multiply together. Got it? Okay, so first step of this particular distribution process is I'm going to take that 2x and distribute to the x minus 1. Correct? But I'm also going to take this plus 3 and multiply it to that same parenthesis of x minus 1. Agreed? Then we distribute the 2x into this parenthesis. So we get 2x squared minus 2x. And then I have to take this positive 3 and distribute to this parenthesis of x minus 1. Correct? And if there's any like terms, we add those together, which I see the middle two terms are alike. So I'm going to add those together or combine them. And this would be my final answer. Agreed? Now, we're going to go backwards. Here, now I want to factor. And here is the problem, the algebraic expression that I would like to factor. So I now need to go from the answer to the original multiplication problem. And you're like, how do you do it? Okay. So remember, based on the last lecture that you looked at, we really are doing one factoring step, and that is asking ourselves, what is in common? What is the greatest common factor? What can I divide out? Got it? All right. So first, I need to go from three terms to four terms, don't I? Because when I went in this direction, the four terms reduced to three. Agreed? So now we need to take the three terms and expand it to four terms. And like, well, how do I do that? Observation time. Here's the observation. The observation is this. When I look at the first and the last term, the positive two and the negative three, I'm noticing that that positive 2 and that negative 3 multiply to a negative 6. Are you with me? And what I'm noticing is about the middle two terms is when I multiply these middle two terms, they also multiply to a negative 6. Why is that important? Here's why that's important. Because if I'm trying to take these three terms and expand to four, that means I have to break apart this middle term of a positive one. And I need to find two numbers that add together to give me a positive one. Well, that could be a positive five and a negative four, couldn't it? That could be a positive 32 and a negative 31. Get where I'm going with this? There's a lot of possible numbers, possibilities, that would add to this positive 1 in the middle so I can expand it to four terms. But they're not going to work. I need to find one, one combination in particular that's going to add to this positive 1 so that I can take it from four terms to this next step of factoring. So the observation is this. When I multiply the first and the last number, I get a negative 6. 
When I multiply the middle two numbers, I also get a negative 6. So here's how we start. Here's the answer, and we want to, we want to factor it. So here's how we start. We're going to take the first term of 2 and the last term of negative 3, and we're going to multiply them together and get negative 6. And now, I am looking for all the possible combinations that will add, or I should say multiply, to this negative 6. That would be a positive 1 and a negative 6, or a negative 1 and a positive 6, or a positive 2 and negative 3, or a negative 2 and positive 3. I am hoping that one of these will add to the positive one in the middle. Notice I said hoping because it doesn't always happen. But in this case, it does. This negative 2 and positive 3 will add to the positive one in the middle, won't they? Right? So, I am now going to take these three terms and expand it to four terms. How? The 2x squared, and instead of the positive 1x in the middle, I am going to do a negative 2x, right? Because the combination was a negative 2, and a positive 3x, because that's the other half of the combination, and then minus 3. So I took the three terms and expanded it to four terms. Do you notice the line I just wrote is the exact same line as this distribution line, isn't it? Remember, when we were distributed, we went this way. And now here's my answer, and I've got to go backwards. So we accomplished the first back step. We went from three terms to four terms. We accomplished that first back step. How did we do it? We noticed in the distribution process that the first two terms, when multiplied together, is exactly the same answer as taking the middle two numbers and multiplying them together. That's how we got started. So we took the first and the last number, multiplied them together, and took the combination that multiplied to negative 6 and at the same time added to this positive 1. Got it? Okay. Now, I need to go from this line to this next line. Again, I'm working backwards. So, remember, this this step is nothing new. This is a step we did in a previous lecture, which means in order to keep factoring this, I'm going to have to pair them up. I am going to have to take the two terms at a time. So, out of the first pair, we're taking out a 2x, right? And we can write it under there for those of you who are visual. And out of the second pair, we're taking out a positive 3. So when I take out the 2x, what remains is x minus 2. Correct? Oh, sorry. Not, see, this is why I need you guys working it with me. Not x minus 2. <laughs> x minus 1. Because 2x divided by 2x is 1, isn't it? A negative 1. And now we're dividing the second pair by a positive 3, and what remains is x minus 1. I went to this next, I went backwards, right? I found this next line, didn't I? Okay, I have one more back step to do. Now that I'm here, I need to go to the original multiplication problem. And the original multiplication problem. How do I get it from here? This is nothing new either. We did this step in the last lecture. Yeah, I have got these two terms, and I'm noticing they have the parentheses in common, so I'm going to divide both of them by the parentheses, aren't I? And when I divide both of them by the parentheses, what remains 
is that 2x plus 3, and I'm going to multiply it by that parenthesis of x minus 1 because that's what it was distributed to. Cool? Okay, so little recap, hang in there. When we were given this multiplication problem, this was each of the steps that it took, when I write them all out, this was each of the steps it took to get from the multiplication problem to the answer. Got it? And now when we have to go backwards, when we're given the answer and they say factor, we got to go back and find each of these lines so I can find the original multiplication problem. But the key is this. The key is understanding that the first number multiplied by the last number is going to find me these middle two terms. Because the observation over here was that these middle two numbers multiply to the exact same answer as taking the first and the last and multiplying them together. Good? Okay, so hang in there. I've got some problems for us to... Okay, so the directions say to factor. Let's look at this first problem. Now, the very first step of factoring, we did it in a previous lecture, the very first step of factoring is to basically, if possible, reduce. I need to see if there's any number or variable that I can divide out of all three of these terms and reduce this polynomial, make it smaller. Is there? No. By the way, I also need to make certain that when I am factoring, after I reduce, that this polynomial is in descending order. Is it? It is. Okay, so I suggest you pause the video and write those two things down if you need to. Again, when they say to factor, the first thing you're going to do is see if you can reduce the polynomial. Afterwards, you're going to make certain that what's left over, if you could have reduced, is in descending order. Okay, so pause the video. Okay, you, you wrote it all down. I'm back. All right, so now I need to take this polynomial, which is the answer from a multiplication problem, and I need to find what that original multiplication problem was. Got it? Okay. So remember, like I showed you in the very first example, we're going backwards. So I need to take these three terms and I need to expand it to four terms. Correct? Okay, do you remember what I did? Do you remember the observation? Yeah, the observation was this. I'm going to take the first term and the last term and I'm going to multiply those together. So a positive 3 times a positive 4, which gives me a positive 12, right? And now I need to find the combinations that multiply to the positive 12. Because, remember, when we expand it, the two middle numbers are also supposed to multiply to a positive 12. So I'm going to find everything that multiplies to a positive 12. And I keep order. Start with 1. By the way, the reason I say that is this, because when I get people coming back to me going, I couldn't factor it, the very first question I have for them is this. Did you write down all the combinations in logical order, so to speak, numerical order, starting with the combination that has a 1 in it? Because if you didn't, that tells me what happened. So we have a positive 1 and a positive 12, right? Ah, but remember, it could be a negative 1 and a negative 12, because both of those still multiply to a positive 12, don't they? Okay, how about after 1 is 2, 2 and 6, both positive, but couldn't they both also be negative? Good. After 2 comes 3, positive 3 and a positive 4, or a negative 3 and a negative 4, right? And after 3 comes... 4, which I have, so anything after 4, I already got. I don't have to check after 4 again. I call this the sandwich technique. 
because I start at the number one and I get the 12 and it keeps moving closer and closer and closer together. The two numbers end up multiplying closer together. So I get to a point where I don't have to try any more numbers past, in this case, four, because I already got them all. All right, now remember, the whole reason you wrote these down is because you're looking for a combination that multiplies to 12. Well, I've got six combinations that multiply to 12. But at the same time, they need to add to this positive 8 because I need to take the three terms, expand it to four terms, but the two numbers that I put in place of this 8 must add to 8 because that's what I'm replacing. I'm replacing a positive 8. So I got to put two numbers in there that add to a positive 8. And at the same time, multiply together to 12. With me? Okay, so which combination? Yeah, gratefully we have one. And the combination that does work for us is this positive 2 and positive 6. Cool? All right, so time to replace. I am going to take our 3x squared, and instead of the positive 8x, I'm going to put the positive 2, but it needs an x with it, and the positive 6, which also needs an x, because a 2x and a 6x add to 8x. With me? Both the 2 and the 6 need the x. Okay. And then plus the 4. Cool? Awesome. Okay. Three terms expanded to four terms. Success! Now what? Yeah. Now I've got to take these four terms and I have to break them apart, don't I? I've got to group them. I've got to pair them. Whichever phrase you want to use, it's exactly the same. So, yes, I am going to take the first two and pair them up. And the second two and pair them up. And remember, the second two start at that plus sign. Because that 6x is technically positive, so the plus sign has to go with it. Got it? Okay, so out of the first pair, yes, they have an x that I can factor out. They have an x in common. Excellent. Out of the second pair, yes, I know I'm factoring out a positive because the first term is positive. Positive 2. Excellent. Okay, so let's see. Out of the first pair, we took out an x, right? And so what remains? Yes, what remains is a 3x plus 2. Great. Out of the second pair, we took out a positive 2. And what remains? Yes, a 3x plus 2. Wonderful. So we went from three terms to four terms to this breaking apart, right? And last but not least, yeah, next line is the final answer, isn't it? Which means out of these two, I'm noticing they both have that parenthesis in common, which tells me that is what was, got distributed to, right? That was the second parenthesis that everything was distributed to. So... Yes, x out of the first, positive 2 out of the second, and this x plus 2 had been distributed to the parenthesis of 3x plus 2. Cool? Okay, then let's look at the second problem. So remember, first step first, if possible, we are going to try to reduce this thing by dividing out of all three terms a number and or a variable. Is there a number that goes into all three of these? Nope. Variable? Yes. All three of these can be divided by a y to the second power. They all have a y to the second that I can take out. So when I take out that y to the second, what remains? Good. A 3y to the second, a minus y, 
and a minus 10. And some of you are like, well, I reduced it. Am I done? Actually, you're not. Here's why. This trinomial can possibly still factor. You're like, well, how do you know if it does or doesn't? Here's the little tip that I've learned. Notice the power on this y is a 1. The middle power of y is a 1. The first y has a power of 2. Since the middle power is half of the first power, it can still possibly factor, which means I have to keep going. Again, how do I know if I can keep going? The middle power is half of the first power. That tells me I could possibly still factor this. Cool? Okay. So, how do we start? Just like we did over here. I need to take, and by the way, this y squared, we're just going to hold on to it for a second, so I'm just going to leave it alone. How do I start? I'm going to take the first term, which is 3, and multiply by the last term, which is negative 10. So I'm going to write it up here. We're going to do 3 times negative 10, which gives me a negative 30, doesn't it? Okay. That means I have to look for everything that multiplies to a negative 30, right? Because the middle two are supposed to multiply, in this case, to a negative 30. Starting with what number? 1. 1 times negative 30, right? Or it could be a negative 1 and a positive 30. 2 times negative 15, or it could be a negative 2 and a positive 15, right? 3 times a negative 10, or it could be a negative 3 and a positive 10. After 3, 4. Does 4 go into 30? Nope, so I'm skipping the 4. 5 is next. Yep, 5 goes in there times a negative 6, or it's a negative 5 and a positive 6. After 5 is 6. I already have the 6, so I know I'm done, right? because it's just going up the other side and I have all the numbers greater than 6 that should be in here. Okay, so now, here's the deal. I have 8 combinations that multiply to a negative 30. How do I know which one to choose? Yeah, I heard some of you say it. You're going to choose the combination that adds, in this case, to a negative 1 because that's the number in the middle. Which combination? Yeah, right here. The positive 5 and the negative 6. Cool? Okay. So, let's start writing. Remember, we're holding on to this y squared. We'll deal with it later. I have 3y squared. And instead of a negative 1, yes, you're going to put in its place a positive 5y and a negative 6y. And then we have the negative 10 at the end. Cool? Okay, now I took from three terms to four terms. Now what? Break them apart. Good. So, taking the first two, taking the last two. And remember, this third term has a minus sign in front of it. It needs to stay with it. Okay, so out of the first pair, take out a y. Out of the second pair, you have to take out a negative because the first term in the second pair is negative, so you know you're taking out a negative. A negative what? Yeah, both of these will divide by a negative 2, right? Or I should say a 2. It doesn't matter if it's negative. But in this case, it is negative because that first term is negative in the second pair. All right, so now, yeah, here's the y. When you divide these two terms by y, I'm left with 3y and a positive 5. Excellent. And out of the second pair, you divide it out a negative 2. So, be careful, right? You're dividing by a negative. So a negative 6y divided by a negative 2, a positive 3y. A negative 10 divided by a negative 2, 
a positive 5. Well, looky there. Do you see your next line? Yeah. You're going to have this y minus 2, correct? And it's going, it was distributed to the 3y plus 5, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Excellent. But wait, not quite the final answer. Why not? Because in the beginning, you factored out this y squared. So this y squared comes back and gets, or gets written in the front. So you remember, after you multiply the two parentheses, you have to then distribute the y squared. So you end up with the original problem. Does this make sense? Okay, I have a couple more examples for us. But if you need to, pause this video, go back and look at these examples, and then continue on. And I'll be right back with a couple more problems. Let's look at this third example. The directions are still to factor, so what do we try to do first? Yeah, we try to reduce it first, right? We try to, to make it smaller. So, anything I can take out of all these, anything I can divide out of all three terms. Yeah, I'm noticing it also. Out of all three terms, we can divide out a y, can't we? Okay, so we write the y in front, and what's left over? I see a 3x squared out of the first term. Good. What about the second term? Good. Minus 11x, and the last one? Positive 8. Good. Nothing else to reduce. We got it all, correct? Okay. Is this in descending order? Yes, it is. Excellent. So remember, we're just going to hold on to this y that we factored out, and we're going to see if we can keep factoring this trinomial. Now, remember what I said in the last problem. The way you know if it can possibly still factor is the power of the middle variable is half of the power of the first variable. And it is, which means it can probably still go, probably still factor. Cool? Okay, so what do we do first? Good. We have to take this first term of 3, multiply it to the last term of positive 8, which gives me a positive 24. Then what? Yeah, we're going to find everything that multiplies to a positive 24, starting with what number? 1. Excellent. Good job. So that's a positive 1 and a positive 24, or negative 1 and positive 24. Excellent. What's after 1? 2. 2 times 12, right? Or, oops, sorry, that was a negative 24. Thank you. 2 times 12 or a negative 2 and a negative 12, what's after 2? 3, 3 times 8, or a negative 3 times a negative 8, right? You know what? I think I'm going to stop. And you're like, wait, why? There's more combinations. You're right, there's more combinations. But remember, you're looking for the combination that not only multiplies to a positive 24, but at the same time adds to a negative 11. And I just found that combination that added to the negative 11. So I'm going to stop and save myself some time and work. Good? Okay. So now what? Good. Let's write the 3x squared. And then write the, neg the minus 3 and then the minus 8, right? Now, here's the deal. Some people go will ask me, does it matter which order I write that minus 3 and minus 8? No, you're going to get the same answer either way, so it's totally up to you. I just kind of keep it in the order that I wrote it. With me? Some of you may want to flip them around as I'm working on it this way. Some of you may want to write the minus 8x first and the minus 3x second. Well, I write it this way and then see if we get the same answer, right? Okay, so 3 to 4, done. Expanded from 3 to 4 terms, done. Now what? Break it apart. 
So let's look. We are going to take the first two and then the second two, right? What can I take out of the first two? A three and an X. I can take two out of there, can't I? And on the second pair? Yeah, second pair, you know you're taking out a negative. A negative what? Eight. Excellent, because an eight goes into both of those, right? All right, so let's look. On the first pair, you're dividing out a 3x, so tell me what remains. Yeah, an x minus 1, because 3x divided by 3x is 1. You can't say nothing, because that's not true. Anything divided by itself is 1. Cool? Okay. Second pair, you took out this minus 8, so a negative 8x divided by a negative 8 positive x, a positive 8 divided by a negative 8 is a minus 1, a negative 1. Cool? Okay, you see what you've got? Yeah, what you're noticing is we had 3x minus 8 and it was originally distributed to the x minus 1, wasn't it? And oh yes, that y that we first took out that was also part of the distribution. Cool? Does this make sense? Is it, is it seeming a little bit easier? Good. One more problem. Let's look at this one. Can I reduce it? No. I don't have anything in common with all three of these terms. Nothing. You're like, wait, there's two variables. It's okay. It's okay. It is in descending order because a squared a to the first, no A's. We're good. Hang in there. We're totally fine. Okay, now what? Just like over here, I'm going to take the first term. What's the number in front of here? Yeah, that's a 1. So you're going to take 1 and multiply it by the last one term, which is negative 15, which gives you negative 15. Okay. So I need all the combinations that multiply to a negative 15. Starting with 1. Good. So 1 times negative 15. But it could be a negative 1 and a positive 15, couldn't it? 2 doesn't go in. 3? Good. 3 times negative 5 or negative 3 times 5. Oh, I think I'm done, huh? Yeah, I didn't even have to write that last combination, did I? Because a positive 3 and a negative 5 will multiply to a negative 15 and add to that negative 2. Awesome. Are y'all with me? Okay. So, what are we writing? Yeah, we're going to write, and I'm going to put it down here because I have a little more room. We have the a squared. And in its place, instead of negative 2, we're going to put a positive 3AB and a minus 5AB because when you add these, you'll get the negative 2AB, right? And then the minus 15B to the second. Okay, you just expanded it from three to four terms. Now what? Break it apart. All right, you guys are getting the hang of this. So, first two, last two. Anything out of the first two? Yeah, an A. Out of the last two, definitely a minus because the first term is minus. A 5 goes into both of them and a B. Excellent. So, let's see. On the first pair, you took out an A, correct? What's left over? An A plus, good, 3B. Excellent. And out of the last pair, you took out a minus 5B. So, what remains? Negative 5AB divided by negative 5B. Yeah, just a positive A. And negative divided by negative, certainly positive. 15 divided by 5, 3, b squared divided by b, just b. 
And now do you see it? Yep, so do I. What looks like the original problem was, is we had a minus 5b, and it was originally distributed to a plus 3b. Good? Does this make sense? Okay, so my recommendation is you go back and play this video as many times as you need to to make certain you understand how to factor. Factoring is extremely important. It never goes away. You always end up using it in other math classes besides the one you're currently learning it in. Got it? Okay, so as always, have fun with factoring, and I'll catch you on the flip side.